Welcome to another Ziva math video. In this video, we're going to practice solving one-step equations using multiplication and division. First, let's talk about what a variable is. A variable is a letter used in place of the value we don't know or the value we are solving for. This isn't a new type of problem. You've come across problems where you had to find the unknown amount. You just saw a question mark or a blank used. Now you'll see a variable take the place of the question mark or the blank. The variable will represent that value that you are needing to solve for. The second thing I want you to think about is the equal sign. Most of us think about the equal sign as find the answer, but the equal sign actually shows you that whatever is on one side of the equal sign is of equal value to whatever is on the other side. I always tell my students to think about equations like a scale or the balance that they use in their science class. If we want to keep the two sides balanced, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do the exact same thing to the other side. If I add a red circle to the left side of my balance, I have to add a red circle to the right side of my balance to keep it equal. This will be the same for the two sides of your equations. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Let's take a look at our examples. For our first example, we have 2x or 2 times x equals 14. And just like we did with addition and subtraction, we're wanting to isolate our variable x. We want to make sure that we do the same thing on the left as we do on the right. So putting the box around the x may help you here. And again, I highly suggest that line going down the center of your problem, at least while you're still learning, so that what you do on the left, you always do the same thing on the right. So we have 2 times x, and to isolate x, we need to do the inverse operation. Well, the inverse operation to multiplication is division. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. And instead of using the division sign, we're going to use the line and set this up similar to how you would see a fraction, because remember, a fraction is just division. So I'm going to divide the left-hand side by 2, and I need to divide the right-hand side of my equation by 2, so I'm doing the same thing on both sides. Well, I'm left with x on the left, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and on the right, I have 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So I get x equals 7, and notice that I kept my equal sign lined up. Now, just like with addition and subtraction, we can also check our answer with multiplication and division. So we have 2 times x equals 14. We just solved for x, and we said x was 7. So I'm going to plug in 7 for x. So I need to prove that 2 times 7 really does equal 14. Well, 2 times 7 is 14. So when I'm checking, I get 14 equals 14. That is a true statement. And as long as you get 14 equals 14, you have proven that x equals 7 or that your work in your equation is correct. We can also graph the answers when we're multiplying and dividing with equations as well. We got x equals 7, so if you're going to graph it, it's simply a closed-in circle on the 7. For our next example, we have 27 equals 9m. I used m instead of x because you're not always going to have x as your variable, and I put it on the right-hand side because sometimes that's how your problems are going to be set up, and you need to be used to seeing it there as well. If you want to put the box around the variable so you can clearly see what you're solving for, and then I highly recommend that you put this line down the center of your equation while you're learning how to do these so that you can make sure that whatever you do on the left-hand side, you're also doing on on the right hand side that's what keeps both sides of your equation balanced so we have 9 times m and to get m by itself we're going to do the inverse which is to divide and we're going to show our division using this line rather than the division sign because that line is setting it up like a fraction remember fractions mean to divide i'm going to divide by 9 because that's what i multiplied m by and so i have to divide both sides by 9 so on the left, I'll have 27 divided by 9 equals 3. And on the right-hand side, I have 9 divided by 9, which is 1, and 1 times m is simply m. So we get 3 equals m. And we're going to check it just the way we did all of our other equations. We're going to take our value for m. We got 3, and we're going to plug it in for m. So we have 27 equals 9 times 
the value we got for m, so 9 times 3, and we want to make sure that that really is 27. Well, 9 times 3 is 27, so we have 27 equals 27, and that proves that our work where we got m equals 3 is correct. So what about when you have a problem like w over 4 equals 5? Well, w over 4 simply means w divided by 4. So we have w divided by 4 equals 5. And let's mark our variable because we know we're still going to be isolating our variable even though this time we have division and placing that line in between the problems so that you can make sure that whatever you're doing on the left-hand side, you're doing the same thing on the right-hand side. Well, with w divided by 4, your inverse operation is going to be to multiply. And we're multiplying by 4 because that's what's with the w. If I multiply the left-hand side by 4, I have to multiply the right-hand side by 4 as well. On the left-hand side, I've set it up looking like multiplying by fractions so that you can see how the left-hand side is going to work to isolate the w. If I set it up by fractions, I can do some simplifying here with the 4s so that I have 1 times w, 1 times w is w, over 1 times 1 equals, on the right-hand side, we have 5 times 4, 5 times 4 is 20. So back on the left, I have w over 1, that simplifies to w, so we have w equals 20. And we can go and check this problem as well. So we're going to go back to our w over 4 equals 5. And we just solved for w, and we found that it equals 20. So when we go to check our work, we're going to take that 20, and we're going to substitute it for w. So we're going to put 20 in place of the w, and we're going to check our work and make sure that our answer is correct. So I have 20 over 4, and we're going to make sure that that really does equal 5. Well, 20 over 4 is division. 20 divided by 4 is 5, so we get 5 equals 5, which means our solution of w equals 20 is correct. And now, if you also need to graph your, your solution, we got w equals 20. w can't be anything but 20, which means you have a closed circle on the 20. For our final problem, we have 2 equals b over 10. And I put the variable on the right-hand side, but remember that doesn't matter. All of our steps in our process stays the same. So we're going to be isolating our variable b if you want to box it and then adding that line so you can make sure that whatever you do to the left-hand side, you're doing the same thing to the right and vice versa. So we have b over 10. B over 10 is division, it's B divided by 10. So your inverse operation is going to be to multiply, and we're going to multiply by 10 because that is what's with the B. If I multiply the right-hand side by 10, I need to multiply the left-hand side by 10 as well. And so working on the right, I know that these 10s are going to simplify out, leaving me with B on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, I have 10 times 2. 10 times 2 is 20. So b equals 20. And I can go and check my work again. I just found that b equals 20. So when I check my work, I'm going to substitute 20 for b and make sure that I really am going to get an answer of 2. So I'm going to put 20 in place of b, 20 over 10 to set this up, equals 2. And so then we'll have 20 divided by 10. 20 divided by 10 is 2. So we get 2 equals 2, which is a true statement. So our answer of 20 equals b is correct. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.